Hello guys, I am Shane Davis with the Year Comic Book Veteran. I'm over here doing a comic book review. I don't do many of these. Actually, this might be the first comic book review I've done on this channel. If you will, look down below, hit like, subscribe, or ring the bell for notifications. Now, I saw the Aliens Romulus, and I was feeling kind of good, feeling peppy about Aliens. And I had seen this crossover. Now, for people who don't know, Disney had bought Fox. And with buying Fox, even though Disney doesn't advertise it a lot, they ended up getting aliens in that. Um, mainly they were after the Fantastic Four and X-Men, mainly the X-Men franchise. But uh, along with that became uh, the aliens. Now, technically, the joke was at the time that the alien queen was now the new uh, Disney princess. And uh, sort of true, actually, in a weird way. So what this means is, uh, one, Dark Horse wasn't publishing Aliens anymore, and that Marvel could be publishing Aliens for years, but have it. And now, today, Jonathan Hickman was trending on Twitter, and that got me kind of curious about this. I had seen the cover for this. I remember seeing this, and I wasn't a fan of it. it just didn't jump out at me as a cover. Now, this cover is very deceiving. Why? Because it shows uh, what you imagine as Captain America and Iron Man and Captain Marvel, which Oddly enough, the only character on this cover besides the Xenomorph that's in the book is Captain Marvel. So, what does this mean? Here's my take. I like Jonathan Hickman on East of West and some other stuff, and I know he can kind of get out there with the sci-fi stuff. You can tell his heart's in it the right way. Like, you could probably tell he's a big Star Wars fan. Rumor was he really liked Legion of Superheroes and wanted to do that at DC Comics. And he's done a lot of cosmic stuff, especially with uh, his Fantastic Four run and stuff. But what's interesting about this book, to me, is how not superhero it is. Now, some people would say, well, of course you need that for an Aliens crossover. And uh, what I was expecting when I first heard of this, if I had to be honest, I was kind of expecting more of like, a, we're going to have Hulk versus a Xenomorph. Now, you will get this in the book, but here is kind of like the takeaway of this book. Is it sometime in the future? Which makes it, in a way, perfect sense um, that it would be in the future that you could get future technology, space travel, all of this in there, and do more of a cosmic type story. You know, deal with the Kree, the Shi'ar, all of this stuff, and um, not. But in doing so, making it in the future, that's what's very interesting about this book. If, whether you're wanting just to read it for the Xenomorphs or not. You basically end up with like what I, I if I had to sum it up, it's kind of like one of those future imperfect type stories that Peter David did with the Hulk. Basically, it shoots forward into the future where you have like a lot of aged Marvel heroes, including Miles Morales, a Bruce Banner that's very old, that uh, old Hulk and uh, very old Captain Marvel because nobody wanted to ever see that. But you end up with Black Panther here with the sun. And on a quest, I guess, to uh, fight Xenomorphs or something. I don't know. Uh, that beginning is rough. I, I will say any of this stuff with Wakanda and T'Challa and his son and whatever they're doing in space is just it. it maybe if it didn't start out that way, I would like it a lot more. Or I would kind of grasp it. But uh, the good is, um, if I had to say the good is mainly what he does with a lot of the marvel superheroes the ones that are left meaning the hulk the daughter of, of reed richards most of the fantastic four are lost or gone uh, a lot of people are psyched that there was one panel showing apocalypse fighting xenomorphs which is eh. if hulk wasn't in it this would suck i'm just gonna leave it at that and of course it's it's a version of hulk not your classic hulk so he's still kind of able to make sentences and talk when he's the hulk it seems like bruce banner's really in control but where this book really shines is not the artwork it's mainly the writing and some of it not all of it I, i'm a big fan of Asad ribic um when he worked on loki the stuff here the emotions aren't all there. The camera angles aren't all there. I There's something static about it, even when there is action. Uh, it's not that action-y. And there are some scenes in here where, you know, Hulk is fighting a xenomorph and, and they're exploding and acid blood and stuff. And it just kind of, it doesn't really feel like jazzed up enough. Now, the good side with Asad Ribic doing this I'm probably butchering his name, by the way. But the good side is it does have this European 
type feel to it if you're a big if you like european artwork like uh the comics like uh mobius or something like that of course this gels really well with just the whole geiger-esque you would think geiger-esque xenomorphs but actually they kind of seem the most static in this whenever i see a xenomorph drawn by Assad ribic in this they kind of seem like i don't want to call them like a posed action figure but they're pretty close to that and there's a lot to this i'm not sure what marvel's code of violence was on this like how gory they could get um with the xenomorphs Usually working in comics, if it's an alien and you're busting it up and stuff, it's not that bad. But even what I'm seeing in here is kind of, eh, I don't know. It could have been a little bit more uh, charged up or a little bit gorier or different or and stuff like that. There is a twist in it towards the end that has to do with Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and a face hugger. And there is a big plot. Um, that set forward with these future superheroes, how they're going to save what's left of I don't know if they can save the Earth without spoiling it. Um, I don't know if they can save the Earth. That's what's interesting about this. I guess, to, if anything, their plan is is to exterminate the Xenomorphs. But this isn't like they can sit, undo what's done and Earth is pretty much devastated. Like, there's no coming back. So, that's kind of cool. They do work in Wayland into this. Now, that's what's interesting is what this book does is, in a sense, you could argue that the MCU is now merged in continuity with Alien and the Alien franchise and the way they uh, do the timeline of events. And they introduced Wayland, Wayland here as building like one of the last human cities. It's kind of interesting if you're an Alien fan and, and you are an MCU fan. You're absolutely going to love, love this book. I mean, it's absolutely great if you love those two properties. It's kind of a probably a fanboy's dream. But with that said, I kind of feel like uh, Hickman's allowed to kind of go off in his own direction here. Like, I don't know how much editorial guidance he's being given. There's some scenes I'm like, yeah, this is Hickman doing Hickman's thing. I wonder how this is going to work, stuff like that. I do like the idea of Hulk being one of the main heroes that, you know, you just can't kill the Hulk. So he's one of the last standing heroes. In other sides of this book, um, characters like the X-Men, when it came toe-to-toe -to -toe with fighting the Xenomorph invasion, they just ran away. They ran away to Mars. So there's a lot more of the MCU still out there in this in this book that you're not introduced to. Again, I, I the Black Panther stuff at the beginning of it kind of threw me off. I, I think that was a really bad way to open and introduce the book, but I do think whatever's happening there is going to be fleshed out in the other, other issues. Now, do I recommend this book as a buy? More so for the writing than the uh, artwork. And I hate to say this, but I'm not so sure if I wouldn't tell you to wait for the trade on this. In some sense, it seems like not a lot was done in some some areas and too, and, and too much was done in others. There is a really cool thing that happens at the end of the book without trying to spoil it. But besides that, it, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it's just, it's a well thought out fanboy Thing. I will say that I do not like the artwork in this book. Um, I, I have liked this artist on other things. I'm not saying it's bad. It just like that Hulk's arm up there with fighting the Xenomorph in the top right hand corner just looks jacked to me. It looks like uh, some more time could have been spent on that. Uh, just weird things like that. Like that's that's a big action sequence in the book, and it just doesn't even seem that dynamic. It doesn't the motion. There's no motion. It just but in the other scenes, the artwork excels, and, and and that's the thing. I don't know if Assad was the artist for this book. He is a good artist, but I, I do feel for the action sequences that are making in this because of the Marvel cinematic or the Marvel characters, period, that he kind of needed somebody who could really do some really cool fight scenes, get, land some punches, dynamic shots little bit more intensity you know with um some of these oh the xenomorphs about to bite you like what that could be a little bit more dramatic or shortening uh, dynamic lighting something just something to jazz that up 
I'm kind of curious to see where this goes because it's a hell of a beginning. I will say that the foundation is laid. Um, they've tied these two franchises together in a story, and um, it's great to see where it goes is something else. I I'm kind of curious to see how far this goes, how far Disney, are you willing to have Hulk have like a chest buster pump out of his chest? Um, I do think there'll be a ton of action figure variants for this. I do think we will get a whole Marvel Legends line of toys that mix it up with the aliens. After seeing the ending of this issue, I, if there's not at least three action figures coming from this, I'll be shocked. With that said, should you buy it? Sure. I'm kind of hesitant to tell people, though, not to wait for trade. I, I do think this might read better as a trade and might be more appetizing. I think it's about six issues or four to six issues. So I'm hoping that they've had enough time to work on this and it will be um, one consistent body of work and will make a nice trade collection. Uh, you know, if I was uh, Marvel or Disney, I would think I could sell this forever, to be honest. It is coming out, I think, at a good time. Okay, you know, Aliens Romulus is great. Um, if you haven't seen it, please go check it out while it's still in theaters. I do like these future apocalyptic world type, else world type books. And I think Marvel and DC don't do many of them. And I think in this case, they are doing a good attempt at one, which hasn't been done in forever. But uh, that's the good and bad of this is you could believe this is canon and continuity or you can just write it off as one of those crazy future stories that will never happen. In some ways, there is a perfect marriage here and so far in the MCU and the alien universe that this could be one timeline. Now, I don't I don't think cinematically this will ever happen because it's just not necessary. But uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, go check it out. And also, while you're at it, please go check out Inglorious Rex. Uh, we got six days left on this campaign, $152,000. If you like Kaiju, if you love Rocky, if you like the fighting spirit, you'll absolutely love Inglorious Rex. I'm going to leave you guys with a trailer for this comic by me, Shane Davis, and Yanti Lin. And go check it out. Um, again, guys, lots of tiers to pick from. We have uh, three comic book tiers, or, or you can just get the main book by me. And if you're new and you're like, I've never read this book before, you can get it at Shop Nine Lives Comics and pick up Inglorious Rex 1 and 2, and they'll ship out the next day. Hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. See you guys with another video. Yeah, I ain't gon' lie to you. Truth always hurts worse. Doing good till first, reverse, now you last. Blast of the past. It's cool though. Last card player right. Who no. We never let up. Been down forever. Sick man, we fed up. Know that we tired. Wake up the beast that's been sleeping inside. It's time to ride. We ready to slide. Hard headed. I will not listen. If you do not get it, that's your bag. No keeping up, sniper the vision, it's no seeing us. This here is earned, ain't no look up. Swift you on the E, gotta cook up. Next level on the way, better look up. Swift you on the E, gotta cook up. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Can't get my dreams away, Freddy. I'm headed, I'm headed, I'm headed. Straight to the list with the legends.